Nowadays, energy is a word in everybody's speeches, but people do really know what energy is? Science took a long time to know how to deal and define energy. Isaac Newton, the most famous of all the scientists, created all the framework of mechanical physics based on the concept of force, not considering energy. By that time, the concept of momentum was defined as a product of the mass of a body multiplied by its velocity. It is a natural idea because, for example, we can easily verify that it's necessary to use a bigger force to immobilize a heavy body than a lighter one, when both are animated with the same velocity. Newton called it the conserved quantity. In result of this, and also by other motives, a confusion arose between the physical meaning of momentum and energy which lasts until 18th century. By then, physics and chemists brought to science two important and fruitful concepts, the concept of mass conservation and the concept of momentum. In ideal conditions, it was observed that another quantity was conserved. This entity was related with the product of the mass and the square of the velocity of a body. It was the origin of the concept of energy, in this case kinetic, name brought to physics by Thomas Young, based on an old Greek word literally meaning that have the force inside. The kinetic energy of a body is given by the product of its mass by the square of its velocity multiplied by the factor one half. This factor one half was introduced by the French engineer and mathematician Gustave Gaspard Coriolis. So the derivative of the energy relative to the time could express the momentum. But history is history. Let's keep the focus in our case. Force is something that anybody thinks to know, what is it, intuitively. The image immediately formed in our mind of the stroke of a cue or the blow with a hammer are the results of the application of a force, or not. In fact, they are the result of an energy transformation. The energy of the muscle of the arm gives up, which transmits a velocity to the cue or the hammer, so the cue or the hammer possesses a momentum the product of the velocity by the mass of the core or the hammer, and which transmitted and conserved to the ball or the nail. When, for example, we experience trouble in getting a nail down in a wood plate, we try harder. But, independently of the force we exercise, our muscles have a speed limit of contraction they cannot exceed. What to do then? To use a heavier hammer, in fact a more massive hammer. Even if the acquired speed of both hammers is the same, the momentum of the heavier hammer will be bigger, proportional to its mass. But after all, what is the real difference between momentum and energy? The momentum, as well as the velocity and the force, have implicitly a direction. They must be expressed by a vector. That means to know not only the magnitude, but also where it's pointing to. By contrast, the energy is expressed solely by a number, a value, not pointing to anywhere. It has the potential capacity of being direct to where it's needed, of being used where necessary. Energy is a more global notion than momentum. The momentum varies with distance in space. Energy varies with time. Energy gives us a vision of the past, the present and the future. Momentum is solely defined for an instant. In the hammer blow example, the energy used results with profit in a work done, the nail penetration and with loss in heat which is generated by the friction while driving away the wood fibers. Unhappily, nature always keeps for itself a portion of all the energy available for transformation, which is lost as heat. 
Energy is a source of work in physical and literal terms. And work results in production. And the products obtained keep us living and progressing. Mankind must solve two delicate tasks to get energy and to use it in a proper and sustainable manner.